Yeah, yeah, brownies are great, but are they treated with the respect and love they deserve? No, because y'all use box mix and it shows. Not judging, but today we are doing way better. So we are back from Thanksgiving. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving break. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the fact that people are using box mix brownies. They think that that's the best option. It's just not true, I'm sorry. To be honest with you, I don't think that there's one specific recipe for the perfect brownie. At the end of the day, it depends on the individual, but I do think that making it from scratch is volumes better. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Uh, yeah, let's just make this. So we're gonna make three different kinds of brownies, but first let's start with fudgy boys. In a small bowl, mix together half a cup or 73 grams of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a cup or 80 grams of cocoa powder, half a teaspoon or three grams of fine sea salt, and the piece de resistance, I'm sorry, is instant espresso powder. It really helps bring up the chocolatey flavor, you know? One and a half teaspoons or two grams of that. Whisk all that together, set it to the side, you know. Then in a medium large bowl, add one and a quarter cup or 282 grams of granulated white sugar, and vigorously whisk in three quarters of a cup or 100 170 grams of melted unsalted butter. To that, you're gonna vigorously whisk in two room temperature eggs. Please make sure they're room temperature and make sure that you whisk them in one egg at a time. Really whisk it until it gets like light in color and nice and emulsified. If you're not careful here, the butter will break and you will have ruined crumbly brownies. So this is some technique. Then whisk in one tablespoon or 10 grams of vanilla extract. Then mix in your flour mixture until nice and smooth and glossy. Like a freshly shined window. And gently fold in four ounces or 113 grams of dark chocolate, roughly chopped. Transfer that to a greased, parchment-lined 8x8 baking pan. Spread them out. Bake that bad boy at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius for 35 to 40 minutes or until toothpick inserted comes out clean. Let it cool to room temperature before cutting. And also, I would recommend using a metal pan versus glass. Just personal preference. <coughs> Am I good? We're gonna taste this now, all right? Let's, let's, uh, let's do that. Even when it's cooled down, it is fudgy as Okay, processing, now to the next one. Now let's talk about chewy brownie. In a small pot, combine a third a cup or 70 grams of unsalted butter and two tablespoons or 24 grams of vegetable oil. Heat that over medium heat until completely melted. Separately, you're gonna whisk together half a cup or 73 grams of all-purpose flour, a rounded half cup or 56 grams of cocoa powder, half a teaspoon or three grams of fine sea salt. Give this some whiskey business. In a medium large bowl, combine three quarters of a cup or 150 grams of brown sugar and a quarter cup or 63 grams of granulated sugar. Lots of brown sugar equals extra chewy. Now whisk that together. Now remember, we gotta be going whisco mode. Sorry. And you're gonna whisk in your melted butter and oil mixture till nice and combined. Then add two whole room temperature eggs one at a time, whisking them very vigorously, getting that nice emulsification. Do not let it break. And then an additional room temperature egg yolk. Finally, whisk in two teaspoons or six grams of vanilla extract. Once everything's nice, whisk together, emulsify. You can add your flour mixture. Gently whisk that in just until everything gets hydrated and you get a nice, smooth, glossy look. I mean, look at that. It just looks beautiful. Prepare an 8x8 baking pan the exact same way as before. Pour that in and bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius for 30 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick comes out. And again, let it cool to room temperature before eating. It makes a massive difference. Cut into nine squares and you're good. Next is a chewy boy, a little bit of pow pow sugar on top. I don't know what that is. For the record, at the moment that I'm eating this, it's been cooled for 24 hours. So here we go. Okay, yeah. So after tasting this, this is way better. <clears throat> if you let this cool until it's completely cool before eating. That extra brown sugar and oil changes the whole makeup. So shout out to brown sugar, shout out to neutral tasting oil, appreciate ya. I thought of a lot of inappropriate names for this one, but we'll just call it a compost brownie. So shout out to Christina Tosi at the Milk Bar, love you. So the batter for this is virtually the same as the fudgy brownies, but just a couple different proportion chains. You can see all the ingredients in the description. So to that batter, you're gonna add half a cup or 20 grams of crushed pretzels, one cup or 33 grams of crushed potato chips. I did add a 30 cup or 46 grams of butterscotch chips, did not like it, you can add it if you want. And half a cup or 30 grams of mini marshmallows. Gently fold that together, spread it out into a prepared eight by eight baking pan, top it with some additional crushed pretzels, crushed potato chips, two ounces or 56 grams of dark chocolate roughly chopped. You get the point, you know. We wanna make it for the person who wants to be real naughty this holiday season. Those words don't really go very well together. Bake same time and tempest before, let it cool before cutting. Uh, let's try these. Yes. Weirdly enough, all that pretzel, potato chip and everything kind of makes sense in here. So we've got chewy, 
Or, wait, no, this is a chewy one. So we've got chewy, we've got, no, no, this is fudgy. Ah, I'm in a weird mood, because usually I would choose fudgy, but today I'm in between either the chewy or the, the pretzel potato chip. I feel like people are gonna complain and be like, Josh, you gotta pick one. So if I had to pick one, it would be, was it Cotton Candy Randy that always said, let me give you my sweetness? Go was. For morning time Josh that doesn't want to be eating brownies right now, chewy. For the Josh that does want to eat brownies, I would say probably the fudgy. It depends on who you are, okay? And this is like a really close runner up to fudgy. Thank you for coming to my brownie TED talk. But do you want to know what else is going to make it to the brownie TED talk? B-roll. and that is it. So, the perfect brownies, it, it's not just, you know, one simple recipe and it, the end all be all. At the end of the day, whatever brownie you like is the best brownie. There is no formula for the perfect brownie. There's no formula for the perfect anything, except for maybe like a rib roast. There is a perfect formula for that. Box mix is like my mortal enemy. It's like the final mob boss for me. I just wanna say thank you to everybody who has been sending me in ideas for merch, sending me in designs. Look at this cool drawing that this person made me. Jessica Kosner, Kasner? We, we already know about my problems with pronunciation, alright, let's just not. Beautiful, it's fantastic. Now with the holidays coming up, I've got lots of holiday recipes. Feel free to send any requests for recipes in general that you want to see. You can DM me on Instagram, you can comment below. But anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.